our next exciting speaker and hero is Professor Winfred Henzer, head of Sussex Ion Quantum Technology Group and director of Sussex Center for Quantum Technologies. Please welcome Dr. Henzer. Okay, um, Ian, welcome. I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, uh, something completely different, uh, quantum computing. Uh, so this is a new generation of computers uh, which will affect uh, numerous industry sectors. But let, let me, before I start, let me, oops, let me see whether that just change the slides. Okay, let me <clears throat> do the most important thing first, and that is acknowledge uh, the real heroes in my group. So this is my team at the University of Sussex. Um, and, and these are the guys who've managed to, to do some of these really amazing things you, you, you're going to see in a second. We should also acknowledge our funders. So what we do is extremely expensive. And, and so we have a whole range of, of, of funders from, from the European Commission to the US, various US DOD departments and, and the UK Research Council and other uh, funders. I should also note I'm a chief scientist of, of Universal Quantum, and I'll get to that in a second, which is a quantum computing company. Right, <clears throat> so what, what's quantum physics? I, I don't know, most people probably won't know that, and, and I've got this little uh, doctor's image here. So we, uh, we, this is actually a, a quantum computing installation we put in the middle of London's financial district. And you can see me here twice. And, and, and the reason why I'm showing you that, that image is because it, it, it demonstrates or illustrates something which is very strange, but is a reality in that in quantum physics, an object can actually be at two different places at the same time. So I can be sitting on, on top of this container and standing right in front of it. And, and it doesn't really happen with big objects like humans, uh, uh, like myself, uh, but it does happen with at atoms. And, and so in quantum physics, uh, you can do experiments where indeed a mechanical object can actually be in two different places at the same time. In my PhD, I was the first to make an atom move both forward and backward simultaneously. So imagine if you're parking a car in this very tight parking space and you end up hitting the car in front of you and the car behind you. That is kind of allowable in, 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 in quantum physics. And then there's entanglement um, for, for referred to by Einstein is spooky. So there's plenty of very strange phenomena. So quantum computing is a means to change these very strange quantum effects and in fact build machines uh, that uh, can do computing. So, but this is a very different thing than a conventional computer. What, what, what it may form uh, similarity in is the fact that the evolution history of quantum computers may be very similar. And uh, so what can quantum computers do? So quantum computers can solve certain problems where even the fastest supercomputer in the world uh, would take billions of years to calculate. And it, it, more mathematically speaking, it changes the scaling of how long it takes to compute a certain problem. So to give you some examples of what quantum computers can do, they really um, have very, very disruptive applications in, in the finance sector and the pharmaceutical industry and the chemical industry. So there's a number of algorithms available. And if you're interested, there's a website I'm displaying here where you can have a look. But one example, for example, is you can break RSA encryption. And that is obviously the encryption you use to, to, to encode things on the internet. Uh, we may, by a better understanding of nitrogen fixation, uh, uh, allow us to have more efficient fertilizer production that may solve some of the world's food crises or, the, or via better understanding of protein folding to your dementia. So the applications are, are really numerous and across all, all the industry sectors. Personally, what fascinates me more about most about the about quantum computing is the ability to simulate other physical systems, and so that allows us, for example, maybe to create new pharmaceuticals or just to do things to understand things in in other systems that is otherwise not possible. So, have you discovered the most applications of a, of a quantum computer yet? And and so so with that, I bring. My, have a look back into history. So in, in, in 1943, Thomas Watson felt there's a world market mode for maybe five computers. And the, the reason why I displayed this slide here is to demonstrate that in the early days of inventing a technology, we actually know very little of, of its true potential. And I think the same, same is true for quantum computing. So how do you build a quantum computer? Um, so in classical phys in, a, in a classical computer, you have a bit, you have bits which represent information, and a classical bit can be zero or one. 
quantum bit can be zero and one at the same time. So it's the same way as I said, it can be at two different places at the same time, a bit can be both at the same time. And what does that mean, really mean? So if you have a very terrible computer memory, imagine you have a memory stick with just two bits, then you can, for example, write onto this memory stick zero, one. If you have a two bit quantum memory stick, because a bit can be zero and one at the same time, it can simultaneously be zero, 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 one, uh, one, zero, and one, one. Now, that doesn't sound, sound so impressive, really, if you just look at two bits, but imagine if you have 100 bits, then a conventional uh, computer can still just so, uh, uh, store one 100 bit number. However, a quantum computer can encode all these different numbers simultaneously. And you can see immediately why, uh, <coughs> because of that, a quantum computer is so unbelievably powerful. Mathematically speaking, it's two to the power of n combinations, where n is the number of bits. So uh, when you want to solve practical problems, there's two computational regimes. One we often refer to as NISC. And it deals with small number of qubits. If you've read the news, you may have seen Google and IBM build quantum computers, and they have around 70 to 80 qubits. The problem is to solve most really interesting problems like RS encryption, you actually need around a million qubits. And, and so there's a big challenge now to build machines that can really store millions of qubits. So what type of technologies can you use to build a quantum computer? One of the technologies now is uh, superconducting qubits. So that's the, the platform used by Google and IBM. And there's a second platform uh, consisting of trapped charged atoms or ions. And, and, and uh, that's the technology we develop. And, and a lot of people ask me, look, if Google and IBM work on superconducting qubits, why do you even waste your time with trapped ions? And, and here I've, I've trying to give you the answer. So trapped ions are a room temperature technology. So, uh, and versus superconducting qubits need cooling all the way to millikelvin temperature. And that means there's barely any cooling power available. So put numbers to it, maybe milliwatts of cooling powers versus trapped ions. At that temperature, you have six orders of magnitude more cooling power. And finally, there's modular, proven modular designs available with trapped ions. And while there is one modular design available with superconducting qubits, the errors are so large that in practice, it wouldn't work right now to build a practical quantum computer. So the reason why we work with trapped ions, we can build uh, silicon microchips and that allows us to now really build quantum computers that could host millions of qubits that can solve some of the really interesting applications. And uh, what we're going to learn in this talk, I'm going to show you a little bit is that we've developed a technology where instead of using laser beams, we can execute computations in the quantum computer simply by the application of a voltage to a microchip similar to a conventional computer. So these are the actual qubits. So each bright dot is one trapped ion. And, and uh, I'm going to use Tom Clancy to explain how a trapped ion com 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 uh, quantum computer works. So it's, it's funny enough, he, he managed in his uh, book actually come up with a very nice, um, concise uh, definition. You can find ions in webs of magnetic and electric fields hit a trapped ion <clears throat> with a burst of laser light, descend it into an excited energy state, then hit it again to ground it. It's your switch, rows of ions in a quantum logical gate, giving you the smallest, fastest computer on earth, neat, clean, and perfect. And while probably most of Tom, Tom, Clancy's, book are, Tom Clancy's books are fiction, this paragraph is actually absolutely correct. Besides the very last sentence, uh, when you come into our labs, it doesn't look neat, clean. Uh, the rest is actually quite, quite accurate. So you encode, how do you actually encode information into an, into an atom? And what do you do, use? You use microwaves or lasers to change the electron orbit of, of your atom and that allows you now to encode information. And to trap an ion, you can't just use an electric potential or something like that, but unfortunately there's a physics law which prohibits that from, from <coughs> working. And so what do you do instead is you use um, something like this. You can see this, this settled potential and if it's stationary, the ball just rolls off. But if I now uh, make it rotate this adult potential, you can see that the ball actually stays trapped on top of this, this potential. So, uh, so this is how a trapped iron quantum computer vacuum system looks like. You can see right here, there's a, there's a fantastic vacuum system. Inside the vacuum system is a, a vacuum better than out of space, actually. So, and, and, 
and there's a microchip inside which makes you hold the actual trap irons above the surface. You can see that here. And this is kind of how the principle of how a machine like that operates. The ions levitate above the surface of the chip and computations are sequences of quantum gate operations and, and transport operations. So, so um, now traditionally these quantum gate operations are carried out using laser beams and that has been done very, very successfully. But, but right now uh, these machines only work with a handful full of qubits. Now imagine trying to manipulate millions of qubits and executing um, gates like that with laser beams. That would be very, very, very challenging. So we invented a new technique to execute calculations in the trapped ion quantum computer. And that works by uh, applying voltages to a microchip analogous to a computer chip, making use of modern microwave technology. If you're interested, there's a paper um, where you can read more details on it. I won't go into much detail how this works right now. So we have limited time, but, but this is uh, kind of a real breakthrough in the sense that we can already imagine going to large qubit numbers. So the next question is, you have to make a quantum computer somewhat modular in order to allow for sufficiently many qubits, because you can only fit so many qubits on, on one single wafer. And so there was one technique uh, often referred to as photonic interconnect. So these are optical fibers that connect each of these quantum computing modules. But after 15 years of de development, the maximum speed, the max maximum connection speed ever achieved is just about 30 per second. So that's a very, very slow connection speed. And so at Sussex, we invented a new technique uh, where instead of using these optical fibers, we use electric fields and to connect individual quantum computing modules. And the big advantage is this is much, much simpler engineering, which then really allows you to think about scaling this to millions of qubits. But more importantly, or equally importantly, um, uh, it allows much, much larger connection speed. So four orders of magnitude, larger connection speed. And so how do you go about building our practical quantum computer? So uh, in 2017, we released the first industrial blueprint of how you would go about building such a machine. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of how that would look like. So you have these X junctions on a chip where you hold ions and then transport them around a microchip that looks like this. And you can see one we've, which we've uh, made. And <clears throat> this is another picture of one of these microchips. And this is an electronic quantum computing module. Um, which uh, is then used to give rise to practical quantum computers. And you can see that as kind of some parallel to, to a conventional uh, computing architecture. So that's in the cross section of an IBM computer chip. And <clears throat> so this is a little film to demonstrate to you um, how a quantum computer would then operate. So <clears throat> you, you uh, start with loading them in a loading zone. We transport them to where the calculations are carried out, making use of global microwave fields <coughs> and voltages applied to the chip. You can now uh, execute a quantum gate. So, so calculate one of the key con components for a quantum gate. And now you keep on transporting ions around, but using integrated detector inside uh, the ion chip, you can now detect the, the quantum state of the ion um, and and now uh, this works really well on one quantum computing model. You can see this here. So this is how a, convent, a, com a computation is carried out. So you can see this looks a bit like a game of Pac-Man where all the ions are being transported around the ar this architecture. And <clears throat> now you go a little bit bigger. So you see this, this is now one quantum computing module. And um, so this has the electronics below the surface, the junctions on top of the surface. And uh, you can uh, mount multiple of these modules onto, <clears throat> onto a frame. And if you align one module with a reasonable accuracy of around 10 micrometers, uh, you can now transport ions from one module to another. So you can see if they're misaligned, it doesn't work. But if you now align these two modules, uh, you can now transport ions from one quantum computing module to the adjacent quantum computing module. And you can see that you can make this bigger and bigger by adding more and more of these quantum computing modules, allowing you to really build machines with millions of qubits. 
So this is a prototype we have in a research group at the University of Sussex um, to demonstrate this. But how do you go about really building practical quantum computers that actually feature millions of qubits? You can't really do that as a research group. And so we founded in 2018 a company, uh, Universal Quantum, uh, with a goal to build practical quantum computers. Uh, so it's a full stack quantum computing company. Um, and, and so we've been working on this really hard. So, so um, we've, we've had a seed round uh, last year. We're very happy to have got some very impressive investors, for example, Village Global, which is backed by Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, and Hoxton Ventures, which you might know about in the UK, have delivered the back deliver room and many Silicon Valley investors and, and German investors. So we're very happy with our investors. Um, so so um, uh, the idea is really to build practical quantum computers using um, um, uh, using the resources of this of the company which work uh, works that in complement with the research group recently we raised around four million and we're just about to start engaging in series a conversations now um so <clears throat> that brings me to the uh, conclusion we're, we're right at time i'm sorry to interrupt if you have one last statement and then we're going to have to move on i think i started three minutes late so so you might have reduced my talk time but i'm happy to talk shorter than 90 minutes if, if you like Maybe if you can just, you know, take a minute and wrap it up, that would be lovely. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's absolutely fine. Thank you so, so, much. Um, so yeah, this is um, um, uh, basically my conclusion slide. So, so I think what I try to show you is that um, uh, quantum computers uh, can solve problems in the form of very disruptive technology. Uh, they will be interesting across numerous industry sectors and um, the the idea how to build such a machine hopefully give me some ideas about um, we use microwave technology to make this uh, more scalable and uh, if you're more interested to hear more about all this so there's a few web pages here uh, which you can um, get more information and, and maybe i'll end with this slide to, as a question to you so what could an unbelievably fast computer operating unlike any other technology do. Thank you very much. <laughs>